Hello guys, um, my name's Michael, some of you might know me from the forum. I just wanted to share something with you that would hopefully come in handy. Um, and it's something that I learned at university. Um, I'm a regular heating engineer, I'm a heat geek, just like you guys. Uh, but I'm currently studying an open university module in, in engineering, I'm on year two. And something's come up which would be really useful. Um, it's something that I'm going to make a note of now after i've worked this out today um and it's and it's something called combining equations hi guys producer harrison here you may have noticed that this isn't adam this is in fact michael and he is one of our incredible heat geek elites he posted this video on one of our Heat Geek forums and we thought it was so good and valuable that we would post it on our main channel be sure to give michael some love in the comments on with the intro <laughs> Combining equations is really useful. It gets used in engineering a lot because the calculations get complex, just like ours do. Um, so bear in mind, I'm not a maths professor. Uh, like you guys, I got into the job because academia wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do, wasn't my strong suit. Um, but this is, um, is very useful and it's something that we could all incorporate as we're starting to use math. So I'll just get into it. We use two equations, right? We use mass flow rate and we use pipe size, and they're the big two equations that we use. We can combine them to get a result much quicker. So, um, for example, let's first take the mass flow. Mass flow rate. So, we're all familiar with this triangle. We've got power and kilowatt. Um, divided by specific heat capacity times your delta T um, equals your flow rate in litres per second. So if we write that out longhand, that becomes flow rate equals power divided by specific heat capacity times delta T. Okay, that gives you litres per second. However, when we use this in our pipe sizing calculation, we use meters cubed per second, which actually is liters per second divided by a thousand. So what we want to do is you want to put this here. So to get flow in meters cubed per second, we go Q, so I can get it off, Q, equals power divided by 1,000 times specific heat capacity times delta T. So there's your meters cubed per second. That's your mass flow rate equation. Next one we do is pipe sizing. So we're all familiar with this triangle, which is the velocity triangle. Flow on the top, velocity on the bottom. Area of the result when we're working out the area. Area is not very useful for us. So if we break down the area, um, well, first of all, to write this longhand, area equals Q over V, velocity. But we don't really want area because area is pretty useless. So what is area? Area is um, pi R squared, and that is flow over velocity but also that's pretty useless for us as well right so we want to separate this out we want radius or more specifically we want diameter which is two times radius um so let's start by isolating radius so to to get rid of the squared you do the inverse operation which is the square root that strikes out the squared and then to get rid of the pi multiplied by, you do divide by pi, which means that radius equals the square root of flow divided by pi times velocity. But we don't want the radius, we want the diameter so radius is diameter divided by two um, 
which again is flow rate, the square root of flow rate divided by pi times velocity. So we're going to move this over to, we're going to multiply this out of an inverse operation. So if you multiply that out, then you can put it there, strike that out, strike that out. So, so now it becomes diameter is two times the square root of this. Um, we also don't want it in meters because we work in millimeters. So actually we want to times that by a thousand, which will also mean that this is times by a thousand. So actually our pipe size and equation becomes diameter equals 2000 times the square root of flow divided by pi times velocity. So that's that. So we've got that equation. So how do we combine them so that we're not working one out then working another out? Because it's going to save time, right? Just plug it in to a single sum and it's going to deliver the result you need. So if we look at equation one, equation one is um, flow equals power. Hope you can see this a little bit bigger. Power divided by a thousand times specific heat capacity times delta T. Mass flow rate. Our pipe sizing is diameter equals 2000 times the square root of pi. No, yeah, times velocity. There you go. So how do we combine these? Well, we choose one that we know and substitute into the equation that we don't know. We don't know D because we're trying to find it. We know Q um, because it's P over this and we've defined all of these items. So what we can do I've written this wrong, sorry guys, that's supposed to be Q, isn't it? That's Q. Right. So what we do is to substitute Q into there, we actually substitute this whole lot into there. Okay. The way we do that, we put P on the top, so the P will go on the top, and then we add these on to the bottom. Just like that. Scratch out the Q, because this is Q. And that's our combined equation. So if we write out longhand, a longhand equation is diameter equals 2000 times the square root of power divided by 1000 times specific heat capacity times delta T times pi times velocity. And that's it. You can work it out. Trust me, it works out. I've done an example. And the example is using 18 kilowatt, which was 2000 times the square root of 18 kilowatt divided by a thousand times 4.2 times dt20 times pi times 0.9 and this came out to 17.4 mil. So that equation there was found by combining equations and um, yeah, highly recommend saving that one. And uh, yeah, hope it helped. Thanks for watching guys.